Welcome. I'm Alice Alicia Jones, and this is another one of my Living Consciously videos. It's been a couple weeks since I've I've been on the uh, video. Uh, first of all, I was gone one weekend, and then when I came home from that outing, I was sick the next weekend. And the last thing in the world I wanted to do was to get on a video. So I apologize for the lack of time that it's been since I've been back. Today's topic is, again, taken from my personal history. What I have today the subject that I have <clears throat> is called The Biggest Lie You Ever Told Yourself. And it's so amazing because when I knew that I was holding myself back from publishing my book, from getting my material together to publish a book, um, I received this information literally in the middle of the night and I wrote it down on whatever was handy and that was a napkin and tissue paper. So, it, and, and I kept those. I kept them in their original format because of the fact that I wanted it to be a reminder to me how my guides work with me, how closely they work with me, how closely they align with the, the um, way that they try to push me forward. And so the, the very first thing that I wrote on the, the, the heading when I said the biggest lie I ever told myself was why write the article? No one will publish it. And I know that that has kept me back personally, but there were other things also. And then along with that, I wrote to myself, why send the email? No one will act on it. I, there are times where I get brilliant ideas in regard to something, a subject that has been talked about and in terms of an action plan. And so why compose the email? No one will act on it. And the third thing, and this was the biggest for me, obviously, why write the book? No one will publish it. But more importantly, no one will read it. And boy, did I struggle with that. And I finally had to push through that kind of resistance that I had built up, literally walls within myself, to keep myself from not doing anything about this, not moving forward with this information. And so I started to think about what was it in that period? And I don't want to overload you with all the problems that were going on in my life, but I took four major issues. And I said, what was it in that period that was holding me back? And the first thing I came up with was that I did not believe there was another way. So whatever it was that I was going after, somehow or other, that that, that is staying in that stuck place was the only way. And then I had to really, really go deep into my soul 
and say to myself, what else was there that I didn't want to face? And I realized, okay, there was a part of me that said, I don't want to show up. And it doesn't matter who you put after show up. I didn't want to show up my family. I didn't want to show up my siblings. I didn't want to show up my um, the current friends that I had, the groups that I was connected to, the groups I hung around with. And whatever it was that I felt would happen from my publishing this book that I had circulating in my head for so many years, um, somehow it just, it didn't feel right. Or at least I thought it didn't feel right. And as I continued to examine that, I realized that one of the those issues, again, this is number three, issue number three, is not knowing the outcome, not knowing what it would look like afterwards, not wanting to face um, criticism, rejection. Uh, you should have included this. You should have excluded that. Any kind of evaluation that I just didn't want to deal with. So just not knowing the outcome was enough to hold me back. And my last thing was inertia. Doing nothing was better than doing something. And I think back on those years, and I know that once I got the book out there, I realized, only then did I realize, okay, getting a book to publishing to isn't the end all and be all marketing is. So now I had another huge mountain to climb. And then I had to face with how am I going to market this? And I paid for several programs. Um, one, I paid for a publicist, pro pro professional publicist to do my work for me. Well, that landed a big fat zero. So $11,000 cost for a publicist absolutely got nothing. And in the interim, I have had other programs that I've been part of that where they basically said, if faced with, uh, these, are, these are people who have the ability to hire you on their programs to talk to you. Um, I realized that the, uh, or what they said was when faced with having a slot for somebody who made their own effort versus somebody who um, came through a publicist, I would gravitate toward the person who made their own effort. So the publicist is not the answer, regardless of what publicists try to tell you. They are not the answer. This company was sold to me as, oh, well, they're the ones who do Coca-Cola. Well, big deal. I'm not Coca-Cola. I'm not even close to a recognized brand. So having a company that represents Coca-Cola represent me for a total of six weeks for eleven thousand dollars, so that you think, uh, look at the math. It's almost two thousand a week. Did it matter? Not one iota. Not one. The what were the net results of what sh uh, she got for me? She was able to line up one blog podcast, and that person, um, after about six months. Uh, we never received my um, my tape from it. And then only after six months of asking for it, did we receive it. But I, I 
somehow I, by looking at the date when it was recorded, it showed that she had just put it into a podcast. Um, so that was again a big fat zero. Um, didn't didn't lend me anything. I also paid a nine thousand dollar fee to Steve Harris, who is the one who helped um, the uh, I can't remember the author, but the book was called Rich Man Poor Man, and he was a brand new author, and uh, she, he helped him move the three thousand books that he had in his garage. So I thought, well, if he can help him move three thousand books, he can help me move three thousand books that I have in my garage. And which mo were moved to my basement. The uh, wonderful weekend. I met delightful people. He absolutely did uh, deliver. He said he would have TV personalities, radio personalities, um, big names, small names. And it was up to us to do our pitch. We were given virtually... 30 seconds to pitch our material. The, there was a problem with that. If you have to hone down what you have to say into 30 seconds, you have to practice doing that. For some reason, when I signed up for this $9,000 program, for some reason, they apparently had all kinds of preparation classes. Like they started four months before you showed up for this. And in my case, they said that I didn't want to be part of that, which wasn't true. So I, I looked at that. So I didn't get the preparation for how to very quickly give my speech hone it down to a 30 second speech because that's all they wanted to hear. The people who had these shows and including um, ones that you would be familiar with like Good Morning America, Regis and Kathy um, and uh, you know, so, uh, some others that were um, pretty notable. But for the most part, they were what I would consider on the second tier of information. But again, I missed a critical part of that training by not constantly learning how to do a pitch for 30 seconds, how to use words to emphasize exactly what you wanted to say, skip the filler words, skip the um, uh, words that didn't mean anything. Very, very important. And uh, so am I ever going to take that class over? Not sure. Uh, I still have the materials from it, and I can practice uh, giving pitches, making pitches myself, and seeing if I can uh, get any further ahead than I did before. The other thing that discouraged me a little bit about that is I landed four appointments. The very first one, the first thing she said was that she wanted a $500 investment from me. And we were told specifically that none of these people that were interested in us were going to be asking us for money. And so the very first one I landed, she asked for a $500 investment. That totally soured me on uh, going after the type of audience that uh, I felt would be available uh, through her offering. And then the second gal, she was much better, but she said, we would like you to invest $300 to help us continue what we do. Um, so I wasn't 
interested in uh, in doing that, but she did give me a half hour program and uh, it did air when it said it was going to air. So I, at least she was honorable and honest. Um, the other two, I don't think anything came of that. I also discovered that when you are working to market your book, tons of work, tons of work have to go into this. So do not feel like you're going to be uh, just a shoe in for uh, an, a, um, uh, an interview if you have a product that you think perfectly matches what that host offers, the type of programming that that host offers. In one case, one of the gals told us, she said she finally took as one of her guests a person who had consistently over four years contacted her four times a year. So that showed me that you have to persevere. You have to just keep going and going and going and going and um, put yourself on a rotating schedule of when you're going to contact everybody. Hi, how are you? I'm still around. I'm still interested in coming on your show, on your program, on your podcast, on your radio show, uh, your broadcast, whatever it is that you want to come on. Just don't quit. Just continue doing that. And um, that will hopefully get you past that place of inertia, that place of feeling stuck. I know when faced with, when, when I realized how much work was involved in, in uh, marketing, I kind of like sat back and said, do I want to do all that work? And my answer was, no, I don't. But effectively, when you're brand new, there is no other way. There is no other way. So whatever it is that you want to launch, just know that the product, yes, might sell itself. The product may be, you might have the greatest product in the world, but marketing is the key. So please do not give yourself and hold yourself back. And especially don't allow yourself to feel nobody is going to want this product. Nobody is, is going to buy it. That is not true. If you have an idea out there for whatever it is, whether it's merchandise or whether it's a, a toy or whether it's a, um, a game or whether it's a book, if you have an idea, my attitude that I, I subscribe to and I will climb up back on the bandwagon of doing the work once more um, is if God led you to it, God will lead you through it. So I thank you for being here. I thank you for watching. And next week, I'm going to go over archetypes, which is something I haven't covered, but which is something that Carolyn Mace covers extensively in her book, Sacred Contracts. And the four archetypes, archetypes that we're born with and the eight that we choose for ourselves. So I will be covering that. And again, based on personal experience. So hope to see you then. And love having you and just am very grateful for your presence in my life. Thank you.